Hey everyone, David is here again, and this time we are going to use Data API Builder with a front end also written in HTML, pure HTML and JavaScript to basically create a complete and fully working Jamstack application. So let's get started. I'm using exactly the same configuration I used in my first video. So I have a table here called to do. Uh, that contains a sample to do that I want to publish so that I can uh, um, uh, uh, show it uh, in a HTML page that I have uh, built. And the HTML page is really, really easy. I'm just using a Bootstrap and jQuery to compose the HTML page. As you can see here, I have a list that is empty because in the perfect Jumpstack philosophy, the list will be loaded uh, with data coming from an API that I will be calling uh, uh, using, uh, in this case, again, I said uh, plain JavaScript. You, you could uh, definitely use a Vue, React, or Angular, or any of the latest framework. Uh, but here I'm just using vanilla JavaScript to show you, even with that, how easy it is uh, to use the API Builder and create your Jamstack solution. So let's start uh, putting together uh, the HTML and the JavaScript uh, uh, code here. First of all, let me show you the page and how can you serve the HTML page from VS Code. Well, there is a very nice uh, extension called Live Server that you can use to basically serve any HTML or static content. So now the static content is being served at port 5500. So if I uh, just uh, click on my browser here, you will see that uh, this is the HTML being served. And of course, it's empty right now because there is no JavaScript injecting uh, uh, values and changing the HTML at runtime. So let's add the JavaScript. Uh, of course, uh, first of all, I need to start uh, the API Builder, and I have already uh, did it, uh, but just for the sake uh, of uh, the clarity, let me clear everything and do dub start again. This will start the API Builder for me, and uh, if you remember the last time I have configured the API Builder to expose uh, an object called to do, uh, basically backed up by the to do table, and uh, the object will answer to the slash to do subpath, and this time I'm also using some mapping to show also that uh, with Data API Builder you can also map a column name to another name in the property returned by JSON. So for example, here I'm saying that uh, the column owner ID will be named visibility and completed will be named instead is done, and I, the column ID will instead be named the TID. And if you if you go and just take a look at what happened when you call uh, the API Builder, that will be API to do first, uh, you will see that now I have TID here, is done, and visibility, even if in database you have completely different uh, columns. Perfect, so we have a little bit of abstraction here that uh, Data API Builder allows you to inject uh, in, uh, in your logic. And now that we have uh, a clear idea of what values will be returned, what properties each item will have, we can just go to the HTML page and uh, basically add uh, the code to load uh, the item from uh, the REST endpoint. And the item um, and the code is pretty easy, right? I have an asynchronous function that uses the fetch uh, function to load the data from my API, uh, get the JSON response uh, and return the value. And then once uh, the document, the HTML doc document has been fully loaded, uh, the function is called. Uh, and then uh, once the execution is finished, uh, we iterate over each item returned uh, and we inject an li item in the list so that actually the list, the HTML list will be populated. Let's save and just uh, run this and see what's going to happen. Let me refresh my page and nothing is happening. Hmm. You see that there is an error here. There is a course issue. That happens because uh, um, Visual Studio code, uh, and specifically it is a live server uh, extension, uh, is serving HTML on the port uh, 5500, which is one origin, but uh, Data API Builder is serving uh, our API on localhost uh, 5001, which is another origin. It's like two different websites, two different domains. So cores uh, basically block the request that is coming from uh, the HTML page, which is on localhost 5500, to be sent and executed by Data API Builder, which is answering uh, on another domain, localhost 5001. That's for security reason, because otherwise you may inject uh, um, inject JavaScript and code in place where you shouldn't inject it. So what we need to uh, configure here to make everything uh, working again is uh, 
the origin and uh, course. So here I just have to say, okay, let's just say that uh, Data API Builder will trust request coming from, well, exactly this website. So exactly from this website here. So let's say that I want to trust this origin. So now let's save it. And now everything is running. Perfect. So that's super easy. You have to install live server, you have to configure course, but then it's pretty much done. Here, the only thing you have to do is, uh, you know, fetch the URL and behave just like you are dealing with a regular REST API, or it also could be a GraphQL API, and you don't really care about the database behind the scenes. So again, Data API Builder is removing all the burden from your shoulder to manage the database as a database. You can see it as an API, and in, uh, I don't know, three minutes, five minutes, uh, that's how much uh, it took to me to build uh, a fully working uh, Jamstack uh, uh, architecture where I have my database, my backend, and my frontend all completely independent from, uh, uh, from each other. Next uh, video, next recording will be on how to do exactly what I just did, but in an even easier way, and also taking into account uh, um, authentication authorization, because here we have not discussed anything about authentication authorization, which instead is something we probably want to add to our front end. But to do that, uh, if we want to make, to make our life super easy, we need to use something else, something called static web apps that works perfectly fine with Data API Builder. In fact, we joined forces with the static web apps team and created something together so that uh, it will be super easy for you to create a full website uh, that is very nice. It supports uh, authentication authorization natively and is very nicely integrated with Data API Builder where you can also set authentication authorization. So follow me and uh, make sure you watch the next uh, recording. See you soon. Bye-bye.